This is the Eng 5443 Solid Mechanics exam from 2018. And this is question three, which is about bending with a, well, a U-shaped or an N-shaped uh, cross section. Um, we've got these dimensions and we are asked for the um, position of the neutral axis and the second moment of area of the cross section for this cross section here. So let's just take a look at that. Uh, this is 3A and what we've got is a cross section that looks like this. Um, where this is 200 millimeters, 100 millimeters and the thickness is always um, 20 millimeters all around. Um, so first of all we need to find the neutral axis. To find the neutral axis we're going to divide this up into, uh, I'll, I'll define my sort of zero here, this is y and this is y equals zero aligned with the, the bottom of that foot. Um, what I think I'll do is to There's, a, there's different ways to do this. Let's do it by dividing it up like so. Um, so this is region one, two, and three. Um, and I think I'm going to say the um, way to calculate the neutral axis y bar equals y1 a1 plus y2 a2 plus y3 a3 divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3. So let's just calculate our areas there and our y values. y1, well that's halfway up that uh, region there. This length, the, the height of that region is 80 millimeters, so halfway up is 40 millimeters. So it's 0 0.04 meters. Y2 is going to be the same, that's symmetric. And Y3, well, it's 80 plus another 10, so it's 90 millimeters, 0 0.09 meters. That's to kind of halfway up on section 3. And similarly, we've got A1 equals. Um, 20 millimeters times 80 millimeters, 0 0.02 times 0 0.08, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. Uh, A2 has the same dimension, so it's also 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. And A3 is going to be 200 times 20, or 0 0.2 times 0 0.02. which is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. So this equals um, 0 0.04, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3, plus 0 0.04 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3, plus 0 0.09 times 4 times 10 to the minus 3, all over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 4 times 10 to the minus 3, which equals, and it's a bit fiddly on the calculator, And I get 0.0677, uh, 67.8 uh, millimeters. And that seems reasonable. The, the neutral axis is pretty close to two thirds of the way up that shape. Um, I'll just make a note. Neutral axis at 67.8 
millimeters. Now, make it clear that that's my answer to that part of the question. Next, we need to calculate the um, second moment of area I. Um, and that's going to be I1 plus I2 plus I3. And for each of those, I'm going to need the parallel axis theorem. So just let's note what this is going to be. B1, H1 cubed over 12. I'm using each of these as a rectangle, and I'm using the data sheet information that the um, I for a rectangle is BH cubed over 12. Um, plus a1, and I'm going to call this d1 squared, um, and d is the distance from the central axis of that particular thing I'm looking at to the neutral axis, which we know is 67.8 millimeters, um, plus b2 h2 cubed over 12 uh, plus a2 d2 squared. If you wanted to um, of course, you could note that section regions one and two are going to behave exactly the same. They have a sort of um, symmetry. They they both lie in the same place vertically, and so I could just take all of this and multiply it by two. But I'm not going to do that because I'm really going to try and um, keep everything as clear in my own mind as I can. Um, so I've got all the terms I need now, and. If I continue from there, um, I'll try and make it possible to see the bits I'm working with. Um, so we've got uh, B1 is 20 millimeters, H1 is 80 millimeters over 12, plus A1 we know is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3. And D1 is the distance from this neutral axis, 67.8 millimeters, to the central axis of um, area one. The central axis of area one is halfway up. It's uh, effectively it's y1, um, so it's 0 0.04. So that gives me uh, 0 0.0678 minus 0 0.4 all squared. plus, same thing again for A2, 0 0.02 wide, 0 0.08 high over 12, plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3, multiplied by 0 0.0678 minus 0 0.4 all squared. Plus, and now for the third part, the breadth is 200, which is 0 0.2 millimeters. The height is uh, 0.02 uh, is 20 millimeters. That's the thickness all the way around. And in my third region, the thickness is is the height of it cubed uh, divided by 12 plus. Um, here the area is four times 10 to the minus three, and the distance from the neutral axis is going to be um, the y value for that part 0 0.09 minus 0 0.0678 and that's all squared. If you're worried that I appear to have changed direction here um, so that I've got 0 0.0678 minus y for these two, y minus 0 0.0678 here, it, it's going to be squared anyway so I'm just um, giving myself a positive number to make the calculator work a bit easier but it doesn't matter which order you do these in once you square the distance, you'll have a positive number in the end. OK. So this equals 8.53 times 10 to the minus 7 plus 
1.23, uh, I'm going to call that 1.24 times 10 to the minus 6 plus, well this one will be the same, 8.53 times 10 to the minus 7 plus 1.24 times 10 to the minus 6 plus one point three three times ten to the minus seven plus one point nine seven one times ten to the minus six which equals Sorry, this calculator work is, um, I'll put my calculator here so you can at least see what I'm doing. Um, that number on screen is the sum of those two, which I'll now double. So I've got the first four terms included, uh, plus 1.33e minus 7, plus 1.97e minus 6. And that comes out as 6289 times 10 to the minus 6 and remember that the answer is going to be in as long as I've been using meters for everything throughout the answer for I a second moment of area we're always ending up with the fourth power of an area sorry the fourth power of a distance uh, this is a distance times a distance cubed which gives me distance to the four this is an area times a distance squared which again gives me distance to the four the answer is always going to be in meters to the power of four and that is that value there. Um, so that is uh, part A complete. That's quite a lot of work for six marks, I would say, and quite a few places where we could go wrong. Um, but in part B, we can get marks a lot more quickly. Uh, this is part B here. And we're told that this section um, ends up covering a bridge of span L, which is simply supported like so, and has a uniformly distributed load of 5 kilonewtons a meter. So the total weight equals 5L kilonewtons uh, because the length of the bridge is L. Um, and what we want to do is find, it, it says find the maximum value of L which gives us uh, the, a tensile stress in the beam of 70 megapascals. So sigma T max tensile maximum tensile stress 70 megapascals and it's helpful at this stage just to observe the whole thing is going to sag in the middle and so the maximum tension by symmetry and observation um, the maximum tension should occur in the middle of the bridge at the bottom And just noting what that looks like from the point of view of the cross section, it's that way up, and so it's going to occur in those kind of points. Um, and so, what do we get? Well, we don't quite know yet what the bending moment is there, but that's really what we're interested in. So, what we need to do is method of sections. Um, I guess I know that the support forces here, R1 and R2, it's symmetric so R1 equals R2 and together they must add up to this 5L, so they're going to be 2.5L each 
And so in this section, I've got a problem that looks like this. Um, and I want to define the will be a shear force V. I don't particularly need to calculate it here because we're not calculating shear forces. But what I do eventually need to calculate is um, a bending moment M. And you might remember that when you're dealing with a distributed load in a picture like this, you want to replace it with a point load halfway along. So we're going to have uh, that's the section that I've drawn is equivalent to this one. Um, if the distance out from here, the distance, the point at which we made the cut is x, then this is um, five x, and it happens at a distance of x on two from the end of the beam. So I've replaced 5 kilonewtons per meter over x meters with a point load of 5x, and that's happening halfway along, so x divided by 2. Um, again, at the cut, there can be some shear force V, which I'm not that worried about. Um, it's not relevant to this particular calculation. A bending moment M, which is very relevant to this particular calculation. Um, so if I take moments about the cut that I just made, uh, then what I find positive uh, 2.5L at a distance of X from the cut minus 5X at a distance of X on 2 from the cut minus M equals 0 and rearranging that I get that M equals uh, 2.5LX minus 5X squared on 2. That looks alright. Uh, the maximum moment is then going to occur um, in the middle of the beam which is when x equals L on 2. So the maximum moment is 2.5 times x on 2 times x mm -hmm. minus 5x squared on 2, which equals... Um, minus 1.25 x squared. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, that that's all wrong. Uh, I've done the substitution the wrong way around. Please ignore what I've just said there. Rather, I should be saying x equals L on 2. So m equals 2.5 times L times L on 2 minus 5 times L on 2 squared, all divided by 2. That equals um, 1.25 L squared minus uh, 5 L squared on 8 Uh, which is 0.625 L squared. I think when you calculate this through, but do just check it, uh, make sure you're happy, which equals 0.625 L squared. So I think that's the maximum bending moment in this beam um, as a function of L, the length. And now we're nearly in a position where we can answer the question, because what we can say is sigma over y equals m over i in bending. Uh, just going back to our original picture, we need to find uh, 
so I can put the maximum subscript on both of these. The maximum stress comes at the maximum distance from the neutral axis and that's the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom of this cross section which is 67.8 millimeters. So uh, sigma max, we're told in the question sigma max is 70 times 10 to the 6 divided by 0 0.0678 that's the maximum that's the distance from the neutral axis to the point of maximum tension equals m which we've just calculated as 0 0.625 l squared divided by i which I calculated in part a is 6.289 times 10 to the minus 6 which means that L squared equals um, 70 times 10 to the 6 times 6.289 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.0678 divided by 0 0.625 is 10.389 meters and L max is 102 meters. Um, that sounds longer than I was expecting for this question um, so I may have made some kind of a mistake at some stage or indeed that may be the answer. Um, but certainly I think I'm happy with roughly what I've done in that question and again approaching it like I would ap approach it as an exam question I'd stop there and if I found I had time at the end I might come back and look at what might have gone wrong um, just because 102 meters span seems like a, a long span for a simply supported beam um, but uh, approximately that is how you solve question three